Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is module 5 of my hieroglyphics course. Um, I'm now halfway. Um, there's 10 modules. I've now completed module 5. Um, and yeah, it's definitely getting more intense. There's a lot more keywords, a lot more factors to take in. Um, but I'm still really, really enjoying it. So this module was um, going more into depth about ideograms. We did touch on it in the last module um, where we spoke about it being um, defining each object that the ide ideogram represented and then um, finding out the idea and the meaning behind it. So walking legs could just be walking or it could mean to walk a distance. Um, to travel. So this is now going more in depth. Um, so ideograms can be used to denote objects, things, words and phrases. Um, vertical lines are used to fill spaces and to create balance. Um, so the subtle difference between an ideogram and a logogram is that ideograms indicate an idea or sense of something with no um, indication of sounds. However, a logogram indicates a character or symbol representing a word or a phrase. Um, and what's interesting is that the hieroglyphs can do both. So it's finding out which one they are. Um, it was actually Jean-Francois Chamberlain, Champollion, who came up with the term ideogram when interpreting the Rosetta Stone in the 19th century. So that's really cool. Um, some glyphs and glyph groups can be used both to represent specific words, represent an idea or thing, as well as used for a phonetic value. So, think of it, let's do English terms. So think of the thumbs up emoji. Now, that can um, mean OK, which is a phonetic value, you read it as OK. Um, and it's the same like, so an Egyptian hieroglyph for house is a square, well rectangle, but it has a gap in the middle, um, and this represents house. Um, but it's also pronounced PR, I don't know how they pronounce that in Egyptian, but it's PR in English terms. Um, so it has the phonetic value of the word house. Um, also, ideograms have multiple meanings. So in English terms, a thumbs up could be um, an agreement. So shall we meet at 8 p.m.? Thumbs up, sounds good. Approval, do you like the design? Thumbs up, yes I do. Encouragement, I got the job, well done. So, and this is also what the hieroglyphs had. They had a symbol, but it had three different meanings so it was about finding out which that meaning was um, and then um, some signs may not be pure ideograms um, so one example would be a duck um, and it may mean a duck at times the animal but other times it may actually mean um, something else so duck actually represents the sound S-A, which is sa, which actually means sun. Um, so the Egyptian language was very flexible. Um, not everything meant one thing. Um, glyphs would incorporate new meanings or meanings attachments to different signs. Um, so a symbol of a duck is conventionalised as a logogram. Um, and so with like English language, like a thumbs up emoji could be yes, okay, great, cool. It could be different words. It's all in the context. So you would have to look at the, maybe the words before or the glyphs before and work out what is the correct term. Um, so this is just a list of common ideograms in the Egyptian 
language. So if you had the glyph of a man, um, it would represent um, different occupations, so depending what position a man was in, what he was holding, um, and then a glyph of a woman um, would show different states of womanhood, so whether this was childbirth, breastfeeding, a queen, um, lower legs would mean walking, um, the sky could be picked as sky or heaven, the sun would be either pure sun or the day, um, if you had a sun over a hill it would be a sunset, um, a star in a circle would be the Egyptian otherworld, so the duat which we know as the underworld. Um, a scribe's tools could depict either a scribe or writing. Um, a sail actually means wind or breath, which is quite cool. Um, a house could be a house or a building or a room. And then a basket could mean a little basket, but it can also be uh, used to depict a master or lord. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, so yeah, that was it for module five. It was actually a really short module, but so much information. I mean, that literally is me condensing it down to, you know, what I can <laughs> to make it easier to understand. Um, you know, these videos aren't just for you to learn about what I'm learning, but it's also to help me learn what I'm learning. Um, it's great for me to like remember things and to look back. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this module um, and this course. Um, and yeah, next week we're gonna go more, I believe, into the second um, hieroglyph, which is the phonograms, um, which are the symbols that compromise a sound. So that would be really cool. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment down below. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed doing this one, it's really interesting. Um, so if you have any uh, questions that you'd like to ask me um, or anything else about the course, do just let me know in the comments down below. I will maybe do a QA. and a um, And yeah, please do check out my modules 1, 2, 3 and 4 if you've not already. I will link that down in the description down below. Feel free to check out any of my other videos. Um, and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye!